Here's a video of us taking a selfie. There we go. I like being part of this type of stuff. Alright, so again, here is the, uh, the audience. We're getting a few more people than we thought, I think. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Alright, uh, please give me a wow emoji if you can hear us on the microphone, and if you continue hearing us on the microphone. Does that sound pretty good? If it sounds alright, give us a wow emoji on the Facebook. Alright. The first song is Stepping in the Light. It is there. Ready to go. Start in just a minute or two and let everybody else get parked. You can play one more song. Ooh. Wow. I love it. Wind died down a little bit, I think. A little bit. <laughs> Look, he's doing his, he's got gloves on his windshield. Did you, did you, <laughs> oh boy. The two of us up here on this thing or the people out there in the audience. I don't you know, know what? You're going to leave that there? That'd be fine. Yeah. I was, well, that's what you were saying. That's what before. I was saying. That's what I was saying. Why don't you start the, uh, go ahead and start the live stream? It's already started. Right. Everybody caught the whole thing. everybody it's so glad that you could be with us today uh, so glad that uh, we have good weather praise the Lord for that you should be on 107.9 uh, and if you can hear me flick your lights or wave or something that we're all good oh. <laughs> I love it I love it we got the hand waving going back there and uh, it is so good to have people here at church. Amen? Amen. Uh, that is awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's go ahead and start uh, with, before I give a word of prayer, I'll give you a few things that we're going to do today. Uh, first of all, you should have gotten a packet. 
and inside that packet is uh, a couple things. Uh, first of all, the program for today, um, and we'll follow that. Also, the song lists so that you can sing along with us. Uh, you should have some instructions as far as the restroom is concerned. Uh, right down here, we have Mr. and Mrs. Rushing that are going to uh, operate those. If they are seated in the chairs, that means the restroom is open for use. Uh, one family at a time, if you'd come in, and uh, they'll show you where the restroom is. Of course, you can use that, and then they'll do a basic cleaning after the restroom is being used. Uh, then uh, they'll have the family go back to their vehicle. Once they return to their seats, then you are welcome to go there and use the restroom. Uh, there is some chocolates inside your packet as well. Uh, those are for Mother's Day. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we got those out to you just in case we weren't able to get them to you on Mother's Day. So those are in advance. Mother's Day gifts. There's some candy in there for the kids. Hooray, right kids? Mm -hmm. Uh, and also, there are some coloring pages uh, because I'm sure that since I have people in the place, I can preach for three hours today because I've got people actually here. So uh, they'll probably fall asleep, but they can color those pictures or do those activities. Uh, but let's go ahead and open our service in prayer, and uh, then uh, we'll go into the song, Stepping in the Light, because we are finally in the light. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we love you, and we thank you for this day. Uh, certainly a very different venue than what we're used to, a uh, different uh, way to be able to preach the gospel. But here we rejoice in our friends, some we haven't seen in many, many weeks. And God, we thank you for the safety and the health that you've given to each one of us. We thank you for our church and our church family that can gather together here today and preach the word of God and sing uh, together. Uh, we pray, God, that you would please protect our nation. Uh, Father, many different dangers are, are here uh, right in front of us. First of all, a sickness. Uh, many people that are immunocompromised and folks that uh, already have difficulties health-wise. And, uh, Father, it's a very scary thing. And I pray that you'd protect us from this illness. Secondly, our freedoms are uh, in danger. And I pray that you'd give our leaders wisdom. I pray that, God, we would do our part to get involved and to protect the freedoms that our forefathers uh, fought so, so, uh, so bitterly for and handed them to us. I pray that we'd be willing to uh, do what is necessary to retain the freedoms that we have. And then, Lord, for your power to be upon this service. Uh, God, I know there's a lot of distractions and a lot of things that are going on and, and a lot of uh, fellowship that we can enjoy, but you also have a message from your word for us through the singing and through the preaching. Lord, we pray that you'd bless, help the equipment to run well so that it would not be interrupted and that we give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, join us as we sing Stepping in the Light. And that should be in their books, right? In the packets. All right, that should be in your packet. Stepping in the Light, trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Sing out loud. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Trying to follow our Savior and King. Shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy are songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of light. Pressing more closely to Him who is leading when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us. Happy, how happy our praise is each day. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Led in paths of light. Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to Him for the grace freely promised, happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk 
in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. On that last verse, trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, we follow our guide. When we shall see him, the King, in his beauty, happy, how happy, our place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, walking in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of light. Thank you for your singing. All right, we're going to have uh, Brother Phil come and sing a special song for us in just a moment. Uh, but I did want to mention that Camp Northland is still on the schedule. Uh, that, of course, is not until uh, beginning of August. And so uh, we do want you to sign up for that if you have children that are interested in camp. Um, it is last year's prices. There was supposed to be a price increase, but... Uh, Northland has given us a deal on that, and so uh, we can accept registrations for camp. Uh, so if you can sign up for camp, uh, go ahead and see the church office about that camp. And then I asked uh, Brother Phil to sing this song for us because it goes along with... Oh, it's going to be I'm on the winning side. So uh, that is so important. <laughs> Here we go, Mr. Phil, go ahead and sing. Sorry about that. That's all right. All right, I'm on the winning side. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope, no joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. Then my Savior came along, and he showed me I was wrong. Now I know I'm on the winning side. Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. No more in sin will I abide. All I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord. I'm on the winning side. From the straight and narrow way, I was drifting every day. Up and on the waters deep and wide. But it all is over now, glory light is on my brow. And my soul is on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. I am on the winning side. No more in sin will I abide. While I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I will never have a fear, for my Lord is ever near, and in Him so often I confide. He's the keeper of my soul, since I gave him full control, and he placed me on the winning side. I am on the winning side, yes, I'm on the winning side. No more in sin will I abide. Well, I've enlisted in that old fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brother Phil. Um, 
Uh, I want to say a big, big thank you to our folks for how sacrificially they have given during this trying time. I know many of our folks have been out of work or uh, been cut down in the hours that they are given at work. Uh, but uh, God has been so good to us through the faithful giving of His people. Uh, once again, this morning, as the men counted, uh, we are above what we normally are uh, during this time of the year. And so uh, uh, our offerings have really been good on uh, the last uh, four or five weeks. I wouldn't want to continue what we're doing, uh, but uh, God has been very, very good to us. Somebody asked if we were going to take an offering uh, today, and we are going to just make a couple baskets available to you on your way out. Uh, if you'd like to give something, you are certainly welcome to do that. Uh, but thank you. Thank you so much for the giving. Uh, we do plan on uh, continuing the work on our building as soon as we are able, as soon as uh, Wisconsin gets back to work, which we hope is very, very soon. Uh, but as soon as that happens, and we'll start to work on the new building. Uh, we are also uh, doing some work inside the building. If you happen to go inside to use the restroom, you'll see that the men's bathroom is finally just about finished and completely remodeled. Thanks to TMC and, and others who sacrificed and gave and worked on that project. Uh, we also did some uh, remodeling in the auditorium uh, to make that uh, amicable for us. And so praise the Lord for all that God has done and what you have done to allow us to be able to continue working, continue meeting, and continue paying our bills. Thank you so much. Uh, as was mentioned this morning, uh, we normally we have a promise of $2,100 that is... Uh, promised each month for the building, and uh, that was almost uh, $5,000 given in April. So thank you very, very much for your sacrifice, for your giving. Uh, God's people have been so faithful to God's house, and I want to say sincerely thank you for that. All right, we're going to sing a song. Uh, what is that one? The Banner of the Cross. You can find the words in your uh, packet to sing along. Right, lifting high that ensign, that banner of the cross that we follow. The banner of the cross. There's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the king. As an ensign fair we lift it up today, while as ransomed ones we sing. Marching on, marching on. For Christ count everything but loss, and to crown him king, toil and sing, neath the banner of the cross. Though the foe may rage and gather as the flood, let the standard be displayed. And beneath its folds as soldiers of the Lord, for the truth be not dismayed. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss, and to crown him king, toil and sing, neath the banner of the cross. Over land and sea, wherever man may dwell, make the glorious tidings known. Of the crimson banner, now the story tell, while the Lord shall claim his own. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss. And to crown him king, toil and sing, neath the banner of the cross. When the glory dawns, tis drawing very near, it is hasting day by day. Then before our king the foe shall disappear, and the cross the world shall sway. Marching on, marching on, for Christ count everything but loss. And to crown him king, toil and sing, neath the banner of the cross. Thank you for your singing. You can turn your Bible over to Romans chapter number 4. Romans chapter number 4. And uh, Mr. Phil's going to come and sing one more song for us. But you can turn over to Romans chapter 4. I'm going to read a couple of passages before we get to that. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 15, Romans chapter 8, 
That's Genesis 12, Genesis 15, and Romans chapter 8. But we eventually will get to Romans chapter 4. And that first phrase is what we'll be talking about uh, in just a few moments. And I want to say a big thank you to what we've called the production crew, but all the folks that lend a hand in keeping our live stream services, our church going uh, as far as over social media today, all the hands that uh, came together to put this service on, whether it be the ushers or the piano player, Pastor Souza, Pastor Longzine, um, Brother Phil here, all those people that come together. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we still are a church body. We're still working together. And uh, I'm so thankful for God bringing these talented folks, Garrett Graff and Dave Sewall and um, uh, Brother, brother um, uh, Dan Smith and others who have come in to work and in the songs and the special songs. Uh, thank you so much for all you do to allow us to continue to minister through social media. I hope it's been a blessing to you. I know it's been a blessing to my heart. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of... <laughs> So, uh, and the song that I asked Brother Phil to sing was, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. I may not know what's going on today, and I may not understand all that's happening in the circumstances of my life, but praise God, we do know who holds tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day I don't borrow from its sunshine For its skies may turn to gray I don't worry o'er the future for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds the future, and I know who holds my hand. Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb. Every burden's getting lighter. Every cloud is silver lined. There's no tears. The sun is always shining. There no tear will dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky, many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand I don't know about tomorrow It may bring me poverty But the one who feeds the sparrow Is the one who stands by me And the path that be my portion Maybe through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow 
I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. <laughs> Genesis chapter number 12 is where we will start and then we'll eventually get over to Romans chapter number 4. I just want to say I'm so glad to see my friends. I'm so glad to see each one of you and sure do love you and wish we could meet together again in the building. Hopefully that will take place in the next few weeks. But thank you very much for taking the time to be here. Uh, we talk a lot about faith and faith is finding God's will and doing it and there's some examples of great faith in the Bible. We'll call them great leaps of faith. Uh, the kids, if I asked them their favorite story, they'd probably talk about David fighting Goliath. That little boy taking that sling and uh, uh, slinging around his head and throwing that rock into Goliath's head. And then Daniel in the lion's den, standing in front of a lion that is ready to pounce. Um, and that the angel coming and shutting the lion's mouth. And then all, all into the New Testament with the day of Pentecost when Peter was preaching and 3,000 uh, uh, people came forward and accepted Christ. It was a great leap of faith. And those are exciting times. But sometimes faith has to be exercised not when you're leaping, but when you're lingering or when you're waiting. So... Yes, David exercised faith when he went out and he fought, the, fought Goliath in that one day, and that was an example of faith. But what about Joseph when he was thrown in the pit and he had to wait? And he was waiting to see what his brothers were going to do to him, and then he had to wait on his way to Egypt, walking behind some slave master who was going to sell him in Egypt, and then waiting in Potiphar's house, not knowing what was going to happen, and then waiting in the prison, waiting for God's plan, and waiting for the butler to remember him. Sometimes faith is leaping, and leaping is scary, but leaping is fun. Leaping is exciting. Doing some great act of faith is, is awesome to do, and we want to be in the middle of that. But sometimes faith is exercised when you're lingering, when you're just waiting, when you're not sure what to do, and you're waiting on God's plan. And so sometimes it's exercising patience. And I don't know about you, but sometimes patience is a lot harder for me to exercise. Sometimes it's easier to do a one act of faith and one act of heroics instead of just many, many days of waiting and enduring and being faithful. And Abraham is an example of being faithful. Abraham is an example of patience. And I hope this is a blessing to you as we give his example of being patient. Abraham's faith exercised in being patient. Let's pray and then we'll begin in the message. Lord Jesus, please help us. Sometimes we doubt your plan. Sometimes we doubt the circumstances that we're in. And sometimes we want that one splash of circumstance or heroic action to rid all the doubt and turn the page on the book and, and, and get us back to that, that stable environment. But in this situation that we're in, it probably won't happen. It'll probably be dragged out little by little, little things that will maybe carry over for months, things that we just maybe don't know how to handle. And I pray that you give us that faith of Abraham to be patient when we need to be patient, to linger when we need to, to leap when we need to, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ever in a situation where you're tempted to doubt God's promises? Are you ever in a situation where you're tempted to doubt God's plan? Abraham was. God had given Abraham very clear direction and a very clear promise if Abraham followed that direction. Look at verse number 1 of Genesis chapter 12. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham. Aren't you glad God speaks to us and he speaks to us still today? He spoke to Abraham and he says, Get thee out of thy country. So here's the direction. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And Abraham did exactly what God said. It's possible to obey 
even thousands of years ago they obeyed, and today we can still obey. It's possible to obey. So Abraham obeyed. That was his part. He followed God's direction. Here's the promise. Verse 2, and I will. How many times does God say in the Bible, and I will do this, and I will do that, and I will come through, and I will follow, I will, I will bless you. He does that all the time through the Bible. And he says, I will, and here's the promises, make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. Make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. I'll bless them that bless thee. Curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And he did exactly what God told him to do. Yet we find in chapter 15, in chapter 15, in verse number 2, and Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? It didn't happen. He, he followed God, but it didn't happen. He was supposed to wait. Now Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Abraham had to exercise patience. Patience. It is very hard to be patient. If you have patience, all the patience that you need, and you don't need to learn any more patience, then beep your horn. Ah. <laughs> Every one of us need to learn patience. Patience. The Bible says in 8.24, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? You're not hoping for something you have in your hand. You already have it. Hope is something you don't have yet. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with, and that word patience, patience. Abraham had to exercise faith in order to have patience. And now our text, chapter 4, verse 18. And that phrase, that first phrase, is the phrase that, that got a hold of my heart four, three or four years ago. I preached this in 2016, and I think it was very appropriate today. Verse 18 of chapter 4, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. You ever been in a situation that's hopeless? Hopeless. Abraham was. Now the word in the Bible that says hope is a little bit different than what we have today. We talked about this this morning. We talk about a hope as a desire or a wish. Maybe it's going to happen, maybe it's not, but that's not in the Bible. The Bible says the hope that we have in the Bible, it's talking about a absolutely certain thing. So it talks about how uh, chapter 15 and verse 13 of Romans, the God of hope fill you with all joy. It talks about the hope of Jesus Christ coming back, which we know that's not a wish or a desire. That's an absolute thing that's going to happen. So the Bible word in hope is something we're totally convinced of. No doubt it's going to happen. That's that word, hope. So when we see the word hope in the Bible, we know it's going to happen. It's a sure thing. Jesus is coming back. We know that's going to happen. We're going to heaven when we die. We know that's going to happen. We have a home in heaven. We know that's going to happen. That's an absolutely sure convinced thing. So then what does that mean for verse 18 of chapter 4? He says, who against hope believed in hope. What does that mean? That means he was convinced it would not happen yet he still believed it would happen. He was convinced physically it could not happen, but he, yet he believed it would happen. That doesn't make any sense to us. Look in the, if you think of in the Bible some of the circumstances that these guys were in, Peter, as he was in the boat, looking at the wind, looking at the waves, looking at the storm, even seeing Jesus and his mind is telling him it's a ghost, it's a spirit. Now, the disciples oftentimes said that's a ghost. I mean, what was it? They were seeing ghosts all the time or what? I don't know if it was their culture or what, but they were constantly saying Jesus was a ghost and Jesus was a spirit. When he came through the door after he raised from the dead, it's a spirit. But he's, but he's looking at that and everything in him is saying against hope. This isn't going to work. Don't get out of the boat! <laughs> and yet, against hope, Peter believed and he got out of the boat. And he got out of the boat. That is kind of what's happening here in this story. You think of the prodigal son. The prodigal son gets angry with his father, demands the inheritance, gets the money from his father, goes and wastes the money, ruins his father's reputation, ruins his relationship with his brother, makes friends that were false friends, loses all of that, goes into the workforce and lives on a farm to feed pigs, and he's not even paid by the boss of the farm. 
And in that situation, clothes that are all dirty and messed up, not a penny in his pocket, no friends, no family, no nothing, everything telling him there's no hope that my father will take me back. But he, against hope, believed that his father would take him back. Even the father, he sees his son walk away. He sees his son blow his money. He sees his son uh, get rejected by the friends. And then maybe the father says, okay, now he's going to come back. But the, but the son says, no, I'm going to go work. I'm not going to come back to my father. I'm going to go work. And he goes and works on the pig farm. And the father knows, physically speaking, humanly speaking, there is no hope. And yet every single day he went to that window. Every single day he came to that place and he looked down that road and he said, I've got hope, even though it's against hope, I've got hope he's going to come back. That's the kind of faith that Abraham had. That's the kind of faith that Abraham had. In Genesis chapter number 15, you can turn over there, Genesis chapter 15. Here is Abraham talking about to Jesus, talking to God, and and they're and they're talking back and forth about how G, how Abraham doesn't have a child, and he's saying, well, maybe the servant who's in my house and he has a family, and maybe I can take his child as my own child, which was hap what happened a lot, and. Uh, 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 God says to him, look, I'm still going to bless you. I'm still going to hold on to these promises. And verse 6 says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. When he believed God, even when circumstances looked the darkest, even when it looked like there was no way out, and God said, just wait a few more days, just wait a few more years, just wait a little bit longer, have patience, Abraham believed God and it counted to him for righteousness. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. There's another story. We know this story. It's found in Genesis and is referred to in Hebrews. One day God told Abraham, I want you to take that son who was born, Isaac. Isaac, which was born. Finally, he has a person. He has the seed. He has the promise. And God says, I want you to sacrifice him. I want you to take him up on that mountain. Three days journey. I want you to take the wood, and I want you to put the wood on your shoulder, and I want you to take the fire, and I want you to take him up there, and I want you to sacrifice him in that lonely walk up that mountain, guiding his son, guiding that promise, saying, give up the promises of God. Give up what I've said. He takes him up on that mountain. He builds the altar, lays the wood in order, puts Isaac right on that altar, raises the knife in his hand, and how we kind of picture it is that God is standing there and I, Abraham is kind of looking and Abraham is just assuming that God would stop him before he kills Isaac. But that's actually not what happened. Abraham was actually willing to kill his own son who against hope believed in hope. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac and he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, who against hope believed in hope. When things are toughest, when things are the, the, the most difficult, when you can't see your way in front of you, it may require a leap of faith, it may require some heroic action, or it may just require stewardship and faithfulness and patience. It may require walking when you don't see everything in front of you. It may require just believing God in spite of not receiving the blessing. Because with God all things are possible. Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from it, sunshine. For its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Abraham exercised faith when it was the most difficult particularly in the fact that he was in a deep problem himself 
Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 19. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. The servant was helpless. The servant was helpless. Don't you, don't you want to, as a man, go fix something? Don't you want a man, I mean, you're at home, you're in quarantine, and you're looking around your house. What can I fix? <laughs> what can I tear down? What wall can I do? Merle Smith got half his house, to, house uh, tore apart, right? Uh, right, eh, Sharon? <laughs> uh, and, and all these projects, because you want to fix something, right? You want to you wanna do something. You want to have some action. Well, Abraham couldn't fix his own problem. The Bible says in verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Did you know that God waited to bless Abraham until Abraham could not accomplish the task? He waited until Abraham was helpless. He waited until Abraham could only give glory to God. Now, Abraham, God did not want Abraham to make himself helpless. He didn't want Abraham to, to somehow hurt himself and put himself in a bad position. I think we should put ourselves in the best position possible to serve God. I think we should go to college. I think we should learn. I think we should study. I think we should put ourselves in the best possible chance of success. But ultimately, it's nothing compared to what God can do with an empty, empty vessel. And he waited until Abraham was empty before he actually started to use him. The Bible says in verse 20, he, chapter 4, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, in that last phrase, giving glory to God. Giving glory to God. Listen, I want the government to open up tomorrow. I want, I want our offerings to increase. I want that building to be done. I want, many, I want the bus kids to come back to church. But the only way that's going to happen is if God does it. It's not going to be our machines. Now, should we put petitions? Absolutely. Should we get involved? Absolutely. Should we vote? Absolutely. Should we be involved? Absolutely. But the only way it's actually going to happen is gl the glory of God is going to come down and He's going to do it. We need to be strong in faith, giving glory to God. But there was also somebody else hindering Him. Look at verse number 19 again. And being not weak in faith, He considered not His own body now dead when He was about 100 years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. What is our reaction when somebody else hinders God's blessing? He could have said, this is all Sarah's fault. This is all Sarah's doing. She, her body is the problem. That's the problem. She is hindering God's blessing. Or he could simply say, God is in control. God knows what's going on. I'm not going to blame anybody and point the finger at anybody. I'm just going to pray to God and ask Him to bless. What is our reaction if the authority is wrong, if our government is wrong? I don't believe our government is stronger than God. And if we do our part, and if we vote and we get involved, and they still make foolish decisions, which I believe they're making more and more each day, I can still claim that God is in control. Even if somebody else is hindering. What if your spouse? What if your child? What if your job? What if, what if, what if, what if somebody else puts you in a situation of great difficulty? Praise God, he is still in control. Verse 19, being not weak in faith. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promises of God. Time is filled with swift transition. Naught of earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You understand, all of this wasn't just for Abraham. Yes, it was about one person following God. Yes, it was about one person believing God and following God and having patience, and then God blessing him. But the Bible says, in thee all the families of the earth should be blessed. We have to understand that Abraham's faith, and him exercising that faith, yes, kept him on that pathway, and yes, gave him the promise, but I am directly affected by his obedience. If he obeys, the promise comes to him. But then that promise comes to all of us through the promise of the Messiah. And the all families of the earth shall be blessed. 
I was affected by Abraham's obedience. And whether Abraham obeys or not would have affected me, would have affected you, would have affected our church, would have affected the mission field, would have affected every single church in the history of the world. Every single person that accepted Christ as their Savior was affected by the obedience of Abraham. Listen, when you and I are faced with a challenge in front of us, and whether we obey or disobey, so many people are counting on our obedience. I believe wholeheartedly that the fate of Oshkosh rests in the hands of Wildwood Baptist Church. I believe that the fate of Germany in September rests in the hands of Wildwood Baptist Church. What are you talking about? Well, the government officials have made it so the couriers can't have their campaign in Germany in September. And we need to pray that Germany opens up again so that in the spring of 2021, the couriers for Christ can get into that place. The obedience of our people does affect the promises of God to the people of Germany. I believe that the promises of God come to the people of Russia or Canada or Mexico when our missionaries can obey. The stakes are so high. The entire population of the Middle East doesn't exist if Abraham doesn't obey. Israel is not existence if, if, if Abraham doesn't obey. Jesus Christ does not come if Abraham doesn't obey. What else could not have happened if Abraham doesn't obey? But it did. He did obey. He was faithful. He was faithful in where he needed to be. Whether that be being a faithful homeschool mom, whether it be a faithful a husband, you're spending a lot more time at home than you're used to, and maybe you're just not used to that. And maybe there's tension at home, or maybe there's a wayward teenager, and you say, oh, I need some patience to deal with this. Yes, you do. And my heart goes out to you. Stay patient. Stay faithful. Stay doing what God wants you to do. So much else is dependent upon your little world right there. I praise God for the folks who here in, in Wildwood Baptist Church who get, it, get up and sing for us to an empty auditorium. They sing and they use their talents for God. I want them to know that I'm affected by their obedience. I want them to know that I'm affected by their faithfulness. The faithfulness of our piano players coming in and working. The faithfulness of our, of our uh, 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 social media folks and the, and the technology folks. I'm affected by their obedience. We've gotten uh, 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 notices from New Jersey and the Philippines and all over the world for folks who have, have been touched by our services. God uses your obedience in, in ways more than you can ever imagine. The circumstances may seem hopeless. And you may seem helpless. You may seem like you can't do it. And somebody else may be hindering you. But the stakes are high. There is so much that can be accomplished if we will exercise faith in the area of our patience and being faithful in what God wants us to do today. You know, <clears throat> sometimes faith defies logic and oftentimes that is the case oftentimes that is the case in November 8, 1837 a British physicist he said there was this equation in mathematics that it was impossible to build a steamship capable of a non-stop voyage to New York okay British guy, he said, it is impossible. And he wrote his thesis, wrote it on a paper, and he said it is impossible to go nonstop from, from, uh, the cont or from uh, Europe to New York on a steamship. Copies of his lecture arrived in New York on April 24th, 1838, aboard a steamship that went nonstop from Europe. <laughs> you may think it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Father, help us, I pray. Please help us to have faith when we need to leap and make a big decision, but even when we need to linger and exercise patience. Help us, I pray, to hold to your unchanging hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Dismiss with the song when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Trust and obey. How many verses? Let's do all verses of trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, 
What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed when we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for those who will trust and obey. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. On the last, then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. All right, in a few minutes, uh, we will have the ushers go ahead and dismiss you in rows. And so we'll have the front row come forward around there, I think, just this side or the both sides? These two rows will go that way. Okay. The last three will go that way. Okay, so this row will come this way, and the last, the last three rows or the last two rows will go out that way. And you just go um, from the front that way like that, okay? Uh, simple enough and then there is a um, opportunity to put an offering you do not have to of course but we wanted to give you the opportunity to put an offering there or there as well um, and then uh, the last thing is how many of you'd like to hear mr. Phil sing I know who holds tomorrow one more time thank you you're welcome all right my pleasure as they're dismissed oh, no, I'll sing. All right. I don't know about tomorrow, I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. There I don't worry o'er the future. For I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows 
what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Every step is getting brighter as the golden stairs I climb. Every burden's getting lighter. Every cloud is silver lined. There the sun is always shining. There no tear will dim the eye. At the ending of the rainbow, where the mountains touch the sky, many things about tomorrow I can't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that is my portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me. And I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Hey, man. <laughs> so you'll be dismissed from your left, so from here this way. So just wait for the car next to you to go, and then follow them out. Uh, this front two rows will go out the west side, and the back two will go out this side right here. We'll start with Mr. I think that's Mr. Ingalls over there. Uh, I think that's him over there. Um, and uh, he'll go, and then so on, just so we can get out of here as quickly and orderly as possible. Let's go ahead and pray and then we will be dismissed. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for our friends that we can see each other again. We pray that, God, your hand would be about this situation. Give us wisdom, we pray. Show us how to handle it. Show us how to react. Show us how to get involved. Show us how to change the course of our nation by voting and by participating. But also help us, Lord, to be patient. And help us, I pray, to trust you. We love you, Lord, and we commit this time to thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody needs a jump for their car, go ahead and stand outside in front of your car. <laughs> I see a pair of jumper cables over here, so. <laughs> you still got the light thing going? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, show that. Great idea. I do have a pair of jumper cables in my car. If you need. <laughs> Join hand with Jesus as you travel this I feel like I'm in a parade.
Elbow, wrist, elbow, wrist. Elbow, elbow, wrist. wrist. Oh, elbow, 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 whatever. We're going to, Pastor Souza, we'll keep it going for a little bit until they leave. He's got this. In case we need to tell people to stop or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. Coming to you live, WBBC 107.9. <laughs> our radio station was WGNR. That's what we did for our high school stuff. Love you. Speed limit, speed Love limit. Love you. <laughs> Make sure you close your van door. <laughs> Love you, Jacob Souza. See you guys. Oh, and you too. Stephanie's okay. Bye, Swalls. Bye, Swalls. You're over the radio now. Van Densen's touchdown, <laughs> brother Van Densen. You're on the radio. <laughs> How you doing, Nathan? Good to see you, buddy. You're missing your two front teeth on your car. <laughs> Second cousin to Mater. Bye, Eurodells. Love you guys. Bye bye, love you guys. Love the start, sis. Esperson, yeah, Puerto Rico buddies. Love you, man. Uh oh. Jump, don't jump, don't jump. Don't jump. Love you guys. Bye, Juliana. Bye, Bye, Joyce. Hey. There I go, Tressa! Yay, Tressa! Tressa. <laughs> Who is this here? Michael yeah, Rushing. Who's that in there? Ethan? Aaron? Oh, Aaron. 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 Aaron brought COVID from Italy. We won't tell anybody. It's not on the radio or anything. Or Facebook Live. Don't worry. Nobody hey. knows. They're not monitoring us. Marons! Hey. Hello, hello, hello! Nice you. You're across the world now. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Was oh, that Lee? Hey Lee, next time bring your nice car. Yeah. Hey Lee, bring your nice car next time. <laughs> All right. Nice man. Pretty much everybody. All right. I think we can go down. All right. Thanks, brother. Um. This day.